Hello there, this is Blake Murphy, once again coming to you with an ACES Biology review. So this is going to be your exam to review. Once again, a little disclosure, this is going to be supplemental material and just some things that I would review and that I have seen be on tests in the past. This by no means is everything you should cover. You should definitely do a more comprehensive review than what is on this, but this is going to narrow it down to what are, in my opinion, the most important topics for biology here at Emporia State University. So, without further ado, let's hop right in. So first we're going to cover reproduction, right? So you're going to want to look through this PowerPoint again, however much you can, but the two ones that I would focus on most are asexual versus sexual, and know at least the efficiency versus the, plus, the pluses and minuses are basically what you're going to want to cover. So for asexual, you're going to want to know efficient is the plus, the positive of it, but you have less diversity, right? It's, they're all kind of clones of that one creature that they're copying. Sexual, you're going to have genetic diversity, right? Each person's different. We do sexual reproduction, all that stuff. But it's going to be more biologically costly, and we have to find somebody. We have to do all this stuff to ultimately have offspring. But you're going to want to know those, know those for sure. Next up, you're going to want to know mitosis. Mitosis, I see a lot of people come in to cover this. Definitely, it's a good idea to do that. It's probably one of the more complicated processes that we talk about in biology. So you're going to want to know for sure prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. You might also want to know prometaphase, but it's not always covered. It is covered in this particular section that I'm doing for the summer course, but it's not always covered in the spring or fall section. So... Just keep that in mind for whichever course you're doing, but definitely know everything on this kind of picture, PowerPoint, whatever you want to call it. Um, you're also going to want to cover it more in depth, each process. There should be probably a slide on each of these for whichever section you're doing. Meiosis is going to be your sex cell reproduction, right? So meiosis 1 is similar to mitosis. So this is where it splits into the first two daughter cells down here. And that's going to create diploid. So diploid means it has a full genetic set of information. So it's kind of similar to any other cell in your body right now after meiosis 1, barring some genetic differences like crossing over and stuff like that, which you're going to want to review in more detail. Meiosis 2 is going to create your four haploid cells. So that's going to be your daughter cells right here. Um, that's going to be your sperms and eggs and all that sort of stuff. So definitely review this process. And if you have any questions, definitely come see. Visit us up here on the second floor of the library at ACES and get some more information on that. So your genetics, right? You're going to want to review this lecture. This one isn't too bad in my opinion, but I definitely do see a lot of people come in for this. So you're going to want to know the difference between genotypes and phenotypes as well as what an allele is, right? So I like to think of genotypes as like the code um, and phenotype is like the physical expression. So this is something you can't see. Phenotype is something you can see. So, uh, genotype is going to be something like A, C, T, whatever, whatever DNA sequence. So think of that, like letters or like ones and zeros kind of thing like that. The phenotype is going to be that ones and zeros or that A, C, G, whatever, translated into green eyes or something like that. An allele is going to be an alternate version of green eyes. So alternate version of green eye it might be something like brown eyes or blue eyes and that sort of thing. So you're going to want to know all those terms and definitely cover those. Population. There are four main things here. Um, you're going to know, want to know the definition of population, right? So that's right here. You're going to want to know the species range. So the, the limit of the species. So for example, say the species range of humans. Humans can be found anywhere on the planet. So we have a global species range. So not every creature has that, but you're also going to want to know what distribution is, so the spread of the species over the area, um, and you're going to want to know the three broad types of distribution, right? So you're going to want to know random, clumped, and uniform, and what makes those happen, as well as what makes them different. So keep that in mind. Next up, we got communities, right? So community, this lecture is all about the start to finish, and this is ecosystems as well. So an organism is going to be your individual. So let's say, let's use the example of like a penguin, right? So you have one penguin, 
it lives within a population, so that's other penguins, so say like 100 other penguins. And then the community is 100 penguins interacting with 10,000 fish and 12 seals or something like that. Uh, and then your ecosystem is this penguin lives with 100 other penguins, which interacts with 10,000 fish, with, which interacts with like 12 seals in the Arctic or something like that. So that's going to be how you break that down, right? It's following the progression and understanding where that progression is. So ecosystems is going to be your biotic and abiotic. So everything else, we're talking about only living creatures interacting with other living creatures. And then ecosystem is when you talk about a living creature and its environment. So next up, we're going to talk about evolution a little bit. Evolution is kind of covered, it's touched on in a lot of lectures, actually. But this is the one that's specifically over it. So this is when you're going to have some allele frequency change in time. So let's say with people, we have, for example, right now we have a preference for height in men. Um, you're, we're seeing more and more height as time goes on. So that is an allele frequency change in a population over time, which is an evolution. We're getting taller men. Um, selection factor, factors. So you're going to have artificial and you're going to have natural. So artificial is going to be human driven and you're going to have natural, which is going to be due to the environment. So humans are going to naturally select for like, let's say dogs, for example, we want, let's say we want a dog to go pull a sled. So you're going to have like mountain dogs or whatever. Uh, that is artificial. That didn't happen on its own. Animals didn't develop to pull carts on their own. Natural is going to be like faster rabbits. Rabbits are fast because they don't want to be caught. So know the difference between those two, and you're probably going to have an, a question on the test. It's like an example of that. So, And then you're going to want to do human impact. And this is going to be mostly stuff that you've heard in like the news and stuff like that. But... It's going to be related to humanity's exponential growth and then the impacts of that. So humans right now, sorry, um, I'm having some seasonal allergies, so I apologize for that. But human impacts are going to be like habitat loss, deforestation, uh, and population destruction. So we are decimating other populations in the preference of our own at getting bigger. So kind of know the difference not so much the difference, actually, but more like the impacts of each of these particular results of habitat loss, deforestation, that sort of thing. And you don't really have a whole lot of difficult questions over this material, but I would definitely at least glance over the PowerPoint. And that's all we got for this one, so thank you for sticking with me. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to contact your ACES biology tutor, and I hope to see you in the classroom.